The story of the disaster that had happened on Everest in 1996 really captivated me. There's something so gripping about it and so fascinating. It's one of the, the great mysteries and moments on Everest. Anybody who climbs anywhere in the world knows that and has theories and opinions on what happened. And there is a sense of responsibility in terms of doing justice to it. No, no, yeah. Everyone associated with this film has been uh, deeply concerned about its authenticity and honoring the characters we filmed in Kathmandu and actually all the way up to almost 16,000 feet near the base of Everest. So that was very, very authentic. You know, we were in the place where it happened. There was a natural progression which I think really helped us all get into our parts. The foreignness of Nepal, the religion, you know, the, the music, the sounds, the food, and then you get out into the mountains. You're looking at one of the most spectacular views I've ever seen. I just saw a village up there, a frozen waterfall right there. One of the most incredible valleys I've ever seen right there. I just went through the town of probably the kindest people I've ever experienced. Pretty cool. Man. Nepal is a, a world unto its own. It's a beautiful place, but the infrastructure is not set up for typical movie making. Most of what you see as you're hiking up has been carried up by hand and by yaks. To think about an entire crew getting up there every morning and the logistics that it takes to do that is extraordinary. There are times where you have helicopters flying over from one unit to the next unit, transferring an actor to a stunt scene or then bringing them back for something else or bringing food to the second unit. It was a sight to behold. I've calculated we had over 190 to 200 individual helicopter landings in the approach to Mount Everest. It totally um, eclipsed any other logistical effort I had made in, in the Himalayas. I don't think anybody really knew the magnitude of what we had to put in place. When we got to Kathmandu, we couldn't get to the mountains, so we were sitting in the airport, and after like two days, we were a day and a half behind. So then we had to sort of batten down everything and just get up to the mountains and shoot our way out. Seeing the crew up there on the mountain every day was the part that really kind of blew me away. I think we were like 15,000 feet, and that's, that's pretty high, man. <laughs> it was hard to breathe. You would walk and you take 15, 20 steps, you're like, it's so hard to walk there. People don't realize, even in the hills up towards Everest, you get this mountain sickness, and it's just like every step is like three times harder than, than at home. It was dangerous for going up to the memorial and going too high too fast and having altitude sickness. So you have a camera guy sitting there, and you know he's starting to feel like he has the most severe flu he's ever had, and you're trying to do another scene, but you don't even know your name because you're so altitude sick. The crazy thing is, you know, you're feeling those headaches and you're feeling all that, that pain at night and in the morning, and yet you can't wait to jump back in the helicopter and go up and see the most amazing things you've ever seen, and then realize that you're still only halfway to the top of Everest and you feel like that. If you look right through that gap, there's the summit of Everest. It is 100% real. It gives the film an absolute grounding, and because we shot it at the beginning, the actors got that too, so they had a recent, immediate experience of trekking up towards base camp that, that they could then use for the rest of the film. We're 2,000 feet, 600 vertical meters to camp four. That's roped all the way. So I know you guys can do it, okay? I want you to enjoy yourselves. This is gonna be a nice walk up the hill. After leaving Nepal, we moved straight to northern Italy in Valsenales, uh, right on the border between northern Italy and Austria. There's only very few places you could go to that were going to match the rock and the landscape under the bright blue skies, because that intensity of light at Everest is what we were hoping for. Valsenales was a really amazing place. It's very cold, it's windy. A lot of times you don't have to act, you're just trying to, to stay on the mountain during scenes. Yeah, these, these are pretty uh, windy, blustery conditions. It's blowing about, you know, up to 40, 50 kilometers an hour on the side here at times. Uh, pretty miserable. A lot of fresh snow blowing around. The temperature is 7.7 .7 degrees centigrade. 
We have wind that's gusting from 10 to 15 to 20 kilometers per hour. So it's really hard on exposed hands and exposed flesh, especially for the camera team and the grips that have to grip bare metal. It's just kind of like Arctic filming conditions. It took them three days to get the wind machine up. And uh, when it came to it, we didn't need the wind machine. It was brutal. It was serious with avalanche warnings and you know having to move and our sets getting buried and Sherpas having to dig them out and yet you know we uh, we persevered and we got some hardcore stuff. Pull out Rob back back oh it takes him boom the win. We had this uh, phrase that I said you know please no acting you know we are going for the visceral but the reality of it not putting on a character being somebody on a mountain. We do takes on this movie, 15 minute long takes. You know, Balthazar likes to roll and likes us to experience the elements and has pushed us in that way. I love that. Getting as close as you can come to the real thing is always fascinating. There's no substitute for how an environment really impacts upon you. And whether that's freezing wind or, you know, driving sleet and snow and your inability to, to see properly and breathe properly. I'd rather suffer through that knowing that it's going to look authentic and amazing than be uh, uh, comfortable. Deep breath. People get bored of nice times, you know, that's like sitting in the sun for, for two months and just get bored, you know. First day of shooting, minus 30 Celsius. I mean, you could hardly think it was so cold, you know. You get through it in a weird way, you know, and it looks great on film, you know, breath coming out of them and the, the, the coldness in their, their faces. You have to come together when you're uncomfortable. You have to, you know, and there was enough chaos on the set and chaos in the mountains that we all came together. We were on an expedition. We were a team, you know, from day one. We bonded very quickly. I mean, I can honestly say that I made friends on this and I know for a fact that they will be friends for the rest of my life. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that we really went through something together, you know? <laughs> you see the personalities of the characters come out, but you also see the actor behind it going through a massive amount of emotions. And in my own way, I got to watch these actors go through a trajectory of severe emotions. Hey, listen, mate, I've checked twice. Okay, I'm telling you, they're only okay. half full. Okay. It was an immersive experience, and I think that's what people enjoyed. You know, we're able to get through the tough hours and, the, and, and you know, and, and the length of the shoot and, and, the, and the difficulties. These types of films and these types of shoots don't come around very often. So, you know, we all went off on a very big adventure together. We all had a very good time. We all had a really good time together. And, um, and it's not like a usual film set. If you're going to make a movie about people climbing up the highest mountain in the world, you need some sort of rugged individual to, to be the leader of that. Balthazar Cormacher is the perfect mix for the movie. There is a fearlessness to him. He wants this movie to be massive. He wants this movie to feel dangerous. He wants you to feel exhilarated in the process. Yet at the same time, there's a huge beating heart underneath it. That looked good. That's the best one. I call Balt the horse because he's, he's like the... He's like the strong man, you know, he's, he's extremely competitive, works so hard. He's not going to put you through anything that he wouldn't do himself. He's a great leader in that aspect. I trained a lot myself, bicycling in, in a snowstorm at home, you know, like just getting myself into physical and mental state of being able to sustain focus through this kind of uh, adventure. His approach is so sort of gung-ho. He really doesn't want to hear that you can't do something. And I think the fact that he was an actor first and foremost before he became a director, his sense is like, you know, I've been an actor. I know what, I know what it's like and let's just do it. He's really interested in not just what he thinks he needs, but what the actors might bring beyond what he thinks he needs. So we're encouraged to bring something new on every take. And once he has what he needs, roll a couple more times and see if things uh, come out that, that he might think were more interesting than things that he might have, have thought could be part of the scene. And cut. For me, in the end of the day, Everest is a metaphor for any kind of ambition. Whether it's making movies, whatever it is, you know, this is, this is the most 
clearest picture of that. There's only been one other movie before this film that I've made in my career that the environment of shooting has been similar to. And beyond anything, even more so than the movie itself, the relationships we have all made together have been incredible. This movie, this mountain, deserves that. I think Universal and Working Title know that, and I think they are working as hard as they can and have for so many years developing this project because they want to do service to all the people who perished and those who have been up there, have summited, have come down safely, and those who wish to in the future. Part of being human is reaching out to try and conquer different things. There's something in the human being who wants to do what Jake does in the movie, which is to, to touch the top of it. I think we've gone a long way towards doing that. There are a lot of my friends now who haven't got a voice anymore. I want to stand up and speak for them so that their story is told as well as possible. I believe that those who tell stories, are, you know, are, have a responsibility of doing it the best way they can. We went to New Zealand to meet the loved ones of the, of the, 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 the characters in the story. Jason came over in September 2013 with the producers and with Balthazar Kwonkur, the director. They all impressed us with their stated aim to try to make as authentic a production as possible. Yeah, what are, what, what are we doing in Empire? Summiting! <laughs> Everyone I met, the first thing they said was, tell me more about this person. How did they act on the mountain? How do they speak? How do they move? It was really quite extraordinary. I'd never heard their, you know, their side or met these people and then heard their experience of it and their thoughts on it all. Jason was taking his role as, as playing Rob really to heart. He wanted to know so much more than just about Rob as it happened in the story. I was working as a doctor in a high-altitude medicine clinic and Rob Hall and his climbing partner Gary Ball were trekking through on their way up to try and ascend Everest. Rob invited me, not out to dinner, but to go and climb with him in Alaska. So that was our first date, so to speak. <laughs> so that was, that was rather wonderful. He was a natural leader and a gentle man not prone to making snap decisions. He was a man that I would have followed in the mountains. Everybody in our group uh, held him in very high esteem. He's just a great guy. He had a sense of confidence, not just in himself, but also that this whole group was gonna come together and function well as a team. Our bodies will be literally dying, and I mean literally dying. So the game is, can we get you up to the top down to the bottom before that happens. You sure can. In the 96 year, the team that we had was a really good one. Everybody got on well. They were a team. Ah! Oh, I'm on the top of Everest, Helen. We made it. <laughs> we did not know that that storm was coming. Go to Rob. You've got to get yourself down. A storm coming at you is different than a storm coming up underneath you. And so you're in great shape one second, two or three minutes later, it's trying to blow you off the hill. The weather was bad, and there was still more than 20 people out at nightfall. Get out there, I need help! I didn't really think I was gonna live through it. In fact, I was absolutely certain I was dead. Everest during the day and Everest at night two different places, and one of them you really don't want to be on. I have no idea why I opened my eyes. As I awaken, I can see my wife and children. As if they were just standing in front of me. And it drives me to my feet. When it came right down to it, I just wasn't ready to die. And I was going to keep moving and keep trying until I was taken down. 
Uh, but one way or the other at that point, I was absolutely confident whatever was required, I was going to walk out of this place. <laughs> Early in the morning of the 11th of May, I heard a voice and I said, that's Rob. And I just scrambled to the radio. Rob, you've got to get moving. You've got to come on down. I talked with him and at that instant I knew he was going to die. The chance of rescue if you collapse above the south summit is virtually zero. Rob used to say you might as well be on the moon. He said to me, don't worry too much. And I hugged my 33-week pregnancy and um, didn't feel alone. When they all came back to New Zealand, I was given a letter signed by all the Sherpas, the base camp ones and the mountains. They wrote, Dear Dr. Jan, we are sorry we couldn't rescue Rob. Too much windy on South Cole and then all their names. I've been to Everest Space Camp um, when I was 10, so in 2007. When I met people that um, knew my dad, I was really overwhelmed uh, by the love and the feelings they had towards him. I did find it a, a moving experience because I knew that this was the closest that I'd ever be to my dad. I beat you. It turned out to be maybe the best thing that's happened to me in the last uh, 20 years. It saved my marriage, it saved my relationship with my kids. I now live much more in the present. I am much more at peace. If I knew every bit of pain, every bit of loss, I'd do it again in a heartbeat. I think we do need to shine the light on people who do extraordinary things, and that is my hope. And people see those things and think, we can do extraordinary things. There she is. Film happens in areas where it's very inconvenient to shoot. You don't want to take axes up there, and um, you know it's not called a death zone for nothing. Once you get above a certain height, so we needed to figure out what was the best way to do it justice in Pioneer Studios. The top of it is what we're dealing with. The upper 3,000 feet is mostly what we deal with on the Bond stage. South Coal, the climb up to the Southeast Ridge, the balcony the South Summit, the Hillary Stup, where it all fell apart for Doug and Rob, and then the summit. Let's do it. There's a thousand photographs of it, you know, so everybody knows what it is, so you can't fudge a location to make it work. We had to make a composite set that kind of worked for quite a few different sequences, whether it's a ridge or it's the summit or the Hillary Step. Up to the platform here, shoot Sunny and Luca. We've got storms, we've got snowfall, there's people falling. It's big emotional and dramatic acting sequences, so you know, it needs you to be in a controlled environment. Did you happen to catch uh, the fact that he put pads on? I'll just have it be known, when I did my stunt on the ladder, I, there were no pads. I just kind of winged it. For the summit, you've got to be so specific, you want so much control. The reality of when people go up Everest, they can only go at certain times of day. It's all about how the shadows fall on the mountain and to and where the sun comes from. Therefore, in order to replicate it, you need to be able to recreate the light. It gives Sal much more potential to control the light because during the ascent, it's a beautiful, crisp spring morning. But that's the whole kind of gist of the story that it's all so perfect, all so well, but it, you know, it obviously ends quite badly. The salt we used for the snow in the studios was it's brutal. I had a lot of scenes with Josh, uh, so we'd kind of go through the same experience. And man, I mean, 
he's he's a strong man, but it, he was saying how harsh it was. You're resorting to imagination more than the reality of what you're going through, and yet you've already created this this core group and this core feeling that you can rely on. The mountain climbing award goes to. It was really a sum of its parts. It's a set that you shoot from five or six different angles to be five or six different moments on the mountain. I like to call it the hair extension way of doing it because uh, doing it all in pan would be a wick, you know? But like mixing the, the real stuff with things, of course, we couldn't do it really because it's too high, really makes for both, not only visually, but also I think for the performances makes it much more real. Dadi, the visual effects supervisor, is going to blur the edges and just sort of gel it together. The way we had really wanted to achieve this was by building a 3D model of the entire Everest area. We would match move the cameras and we would then take those CG cameras and we would put them in the actual location on our 3D model, rotate it to be looking in the correct direction, and then you'd have an absolutely correct geographical version of what you would see. What it also gave us was the ability to do these big, fully CG establishing shots that uh, were inspiring. The way in which you can use visual effects is, is incredible, and that, that taking an audience to real places through visual effects rather than to fantastical places is something that interests me a lot. The thing about Paul is he knows what he wants. Ultimately when he gets there and he's not happy, he'll stop the shoot until it's done right. And that's great because he's a man from the snow and ice, so he knows snow and ice, which obviously makes my job slightly more difficult because he has a very, very critical eye but it's good because it's always pushing us as a department to try and get it as, as, as realistic and gritty and visceral as, as the story demands. It's been uh, remarkable to see what can be done on a big stage. I found that really um, reassuring and really caused me to have such a high regard for the quality of this team and their craft that they could take a synthetic mountain in a big stage and make it look and feel like the top of Mount Everest. I'm on the top of Everest, Helen, we made it. <laughs> oh, we copy you loud and clear, Rob. It's wonderful to hear your voice up there. I know that Bolt wanted to make it as real as possible, so suddenly we're in Nepal. It was cold, it was minus 20. Every single person who came out onto the mountain had spent days before learning how to put ropes on and off and how to cramp on and, and you know, it's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of technical work involved. You know, everyone rocks up with their gear and they don't really know how to use it to begin with. Everyone had to learn and to deal with their, their gear because your gear is what saves you up there, what, what looks after you, you know. You know, John Hawkes was amazing, you know, he'd never he even knew what a cramp on was. You know, and but but it's 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 those types of things that get you focused and you find your character and everybody was committed. He can't be too far ahead of you, mate. Yeah, I'll make it down in half the time. <sighs> we did a altitude simulation when we were training for the movie all together as a cast, and we went up to what was, you know, the equivalent of thirty thousand feet. We were there in this chamber for ten minutes. Uh, Josh Brolin and I decided to stay longer. We thought we could handle it, you know. And then all of a sudden we got out. I immediately just went from laughing and laughing and laughing to being really sad, sort of within 10 minutes of being out. And it was this incredible experiment and realization, the power of being so high up, what it does to your mind. No, I'm pretty sure you shot me on a look. No, I just have. They're not hey, full. Listen, I saw. Look, mate, I checked twice, all right? I'm an outdoorsy guy, and I never really climbed. You know, something that never really even piqued my interest, but then going up to just shy of base camp there in Nepal, and you're like, oh man, I kind of, I might be able to do that. <laughs> Am I able to do this? And are they treating us like actors doing a story? Or they really want us to be the thing? And they want us to go to boot camp? And are we at war? What are we doing? Once I said yes, uh, we climbed Mount Whitney, we climbed Mount Shasta, put myself in situations being a guy who's afraid of heights. 
was afraid of heights. That scared me literally to death. As our guides, I know we had David Brashears, who had been a consultant on the film and has been up Everest many times, and a guy, Cotter, who uh, also features in the film and was up the mountain in 1996 and now runs Adventure Consultants. So the cast had two people who they got to know very well who had been through the real experiences of what we were about to depict, but also ongoing mountaineering experience to help this cast get into it. There was a lot of uh, preparation for this project, a lot of things to learn. Uh, luckily, we were blessed with David Rashears and Guy Cotter and many other excellent climbers who kind of showed us the ropes, literally. We did training for these actors to teach them how to climb and how to look good, and, and they did. I think the way that, that they took these roles on really impressed me. I have been so deeply affected and pleased by the uh, level of commitment from the actors to bring authenticity and dignity and truthfulness to the characters and to the story. Everybody afforded themselves pretty, pretty well though, considering most of us hadn't anything like that before. We're very safe and we had all the, you know, Guy Cotter was there to, to protect us and, and, you know, and actually called a day once and then an avalanche happened later in the day in the same place where we were filming. Hold on guys, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to stop. I'm sorry, the avalanche is coming down here, down here. Big storm came in and if we'd still been up there we would have all been stuck. So I had to make a call to leave the mountain, which was really tough because we only just started filming, but at the end of the day, that's not as important as keeping everybody safe. So, folks, we have an increased avalanche risk, so please safely, slowly make your way down. When you lead a team like that, and you are a team leader, you have to be so charismatic, but also so trustworthy. And a lot of the mountain climbers that we've met, like Guy Cotter and David Bashir since then, they're all kind of similar kind of guys. They're just so liable, but so lovely and really caring, and you would trust them with your life.